Thank you, Lord Adonis, for your speech. Um, we'll be now moving to Lady Victoria Boric, who will be opening the case for the opposition. Victoria Boric served as a Conservative MP for Kensington between 2015 and 2017. Thank you. President, ladies and gentlemen, well, that certainly got us all going, didn't it? I shall talk on a slightly different vein further to our side of the debate this evening. Thank you for inviting me here today. I have to say, although I've attended some of your famous May balls and punted on the River Cam, I'm not actually a frequent visitor to Cambridge, although I do have a nephew studying modern languages here. And my father studied maths at King's many, many years ago. My father was an only child, as his father had been killed, like so many, in the Great War. And he was a self-made man. He put his learning and training to good use and became a successful entrepreneur, engineer, and worked in many businesses over his lifetime. The first answer phone, metal castings, um, intricate metal coatings and components generally for the motor industry. But as a result of that background, I grew up knowing about the importance of hard work, taking responsibility for your life and your decisions and working to earn money. I know it was important to let those who can get on with it and be wealth creators and to help those who need help. So I believe in the freedom of the individual, but also the importance of people to work together for the common good, the importance of law and order, so that we can feel safe as we go about our daily lives. And that means a strong one-nation policy. But I also believe in leaving the planet in a better state. I believe that we have a duty not to plunge this country into debt, but to manage all our resources responsibly. Thus, tonight, I'm making the case that this House should have confidence in the government. It's important to consider the wording of the motion. It's about confidence in the government, and that, of course, currently means the Conservative government and the principles that we stand by. And, of course, it's important to establish what the government is for. It's there to help people by making the rules by which the country and the economy operates. It's there to get the balance right between taxation, which supports defence, security, education, the NHS, healthcare. And in spite of those challenges, unemployment is down, earnings have increased, and the economy has grown by 19% since 2010. The national living wage has increased, and the Conservatives have continued to invest in the NHS. Now, having been the Deputy Mayor of London, a job that's brought me the publicity of working for the guy, of course, who's now the Prime Minister, hence I'm sure why the invitation was extended to me tonight, as probably no one has worked more closely in a professional sense <laughs> with our current Prime Minister. Now, our Prime Minister is passionate about investing in education and levelling up the funding for schools. I can also say, as a school governor myself, nothing is more important than continuing to invest in our pupils, as they and you will be the wealth generators of the future. And we shall need all your ingenuity and creative abilities as we continue to enrich the United Kingdom. It's vital that the government continues with the component, competent stewardship of the economy, as well as being on the side of hard-working families. Conservatives believe in a lot of different values, some of them in contention, and some of them reinforce each other. We're rather like the ancient timbers all holding up the roof, strong and enduring, but each codependent on one another. Some believe in social conservatism and traditional values, some in civic conservatism, the power of people working together. Not just the power of the state, but the opportunity to make our own decisions. While conservatives may believe 
in self-reliance is not exclusively about self. We rely on our friends and our community, whether here, where your community is within the university, or in our wider networks. It's about the mutual support that we give each other, not dependent on the state. Indeed, to go back to Mrs. Thatcher, as was mentioned earlier, who felt that too much government had weakened the social institutions which best foster self-respect and respect for others. Your families, churches, schools, voluntary associations. She was in favor of people being free to make money because then they will be better able to help themselves and therefore their neighbors. Far from weakening society, she believed successful enterprise strengthened them. Business is not an immoral force, but an important part of what David Cameron then went on to call the big society. An understanding of civic society is vital. How many of you are volunteers or have been part of volunteering organizations? Scouts, cadets, brownies, girl guides, all mutually and self-supporting voluntary organization representing the best of civic society. I don't know if any of you are fans of Call the Midwife. Anybody watched it? No? Well, I found it fascinating historically because viewers have seen the community at its best and how it supported those who needed help. When you saw the introduction of the NHS and the transformation of care, medicine, uh, vaccinations, greater cleanliness, better training and education. But suddenly, all care was in hospital and all the old local centers within the community closed down. And the knowledge and expertise were now confined to a far smaller group of people and a dependency culture was created. Having been a local councillor and an MP, I see that dependency culture. I have a, you know, I see that people, we have a created society where people say, I have a problem, but it's the government's job to cope with it and sort it out, as if there was this omnipresent being who could perform magic and all things would be put right. However, as you will know, no government can do anything except for through the people. So it's our duty to look after ourselves and then to look after our neighbors. So what does the future hold for you as students? Studying here gives you every opportunity in life. And how are you going to use that opportunity? Consider what effect the changes over the last 20 or 30 years have brought. Improved health, improved communication. We're able to carry in the palm of our hand computers that took rooms years ago. We have the ability to travel. Uh, we have improvements in the standard of living, giving us so many opportunities as how you can spend your time and how you will earn your living. You will be the wealth creators and make the profits and be successful. And profits exist because of the success and hard work of the people. And that gives you the freedom to make your choices. You will be the school governors. You will be the local councillors, members of parliament for the future. And I challenge you to create the government that commands the support and confidence of the British people. Yes, I have confidence in the government and the direction the current prime minister is takes us because I know that the Prime Minister believes in maximizing the energy of the British people. He wants to create an economic climate where people can be successful, to encourage business, to encourage wealth creation, to encourage entrepreneurship. For example, overseas students will now be able to stay on after their studies so that they too can contribute to the British economy. Boris is investing in more police, investing in schools, investing in the NHS, in infrastructure. And as he said, <laughs> thank you, sir. Well, of course, we had more police during the Olympics and then gradually some have gone. And you're quite right. I think this government has admitted that it let the numbers get too low, 
And I think if you can't have a government or a relationship or any attitude where people can say, yes, we got the number wrong, yes, we have to invest again, and I don't think anybody for either side of the debate will say that, oh, well, you mustn't admit getting something wrong because that gives you the chance of putting it right again. Yes? Of the 20,000 new police, sadly, police have to be trained. So actually, realistically, although we're going to see 20,000 more police, we're probably not going to see it before any general election that Lord Adonis has predicted. We're talking of spreading it around the country, probably of that number up to 5,000 in London, but that's the debate, because everybody is fighting. And I know that you all come from all over the country, and in fact, all over the world, and everybody is pitching, of course, to have their share. So what the final allocation will be is probably a few hundred in each county, and therefore a few more in some of the constituencies, depending how it is. To continue. So to go back to the Prime Minister... As he has said in his conference speech, how are we going to grow the UK economy? I will tell you, that is by raising the productivity of the whole of the United Kingdom, not with socialism, but by creating the economic platform for dynamic, free market capitalism. Alternatively, of course, you can abandon the current government and give support to your motion tonight and go for a leader who is probably the most left-wing of my lifetime. People before profit, that's what we heard at the Labour Party conference, but how do you imagine that profits can exist except from the people? Profits are needed in order to fund the public services that we rely on. So Labour offered to steal the assets of private schools, close off debt, expropriate your shares, increase taxation, bring in the property tax, reduce your pensions, spending money that we don't currently have. And of course, most importantly, as we heard, disregarding the way people voted in the referendum. As we take back control from Brussels, we need to resolve what sort of nation we want to build as we bring the country back together again. We must be a nation that's attractive to the brightest and the best with respected institutions. We may maintain the tradition of the independent judiciary, responsible parliament, democracy. Yes. But then, of course, you go back to Brexit and more people voted in that than most general elections. And we're, I think, and as many Labour colleagues have also said, we have got to, you know, we've got to respect the result of the referendum. And then from that on, we can then make decisions after that. So it's going to be vital for any party, for any prime minister to reunite this country, to make sure that we make it a place that welcomes the brightest and the best so that we can go back and reinvest in this country. Because I think we have a bright future ahead of us. So I've been told I must conclude, though I hoped I was going to have a few more seconds after that. As conservatives, we don't make people follow a particular mold. We go with human nature and all the foibles that brings with it but we don't believe in the superpower of the state. So in conclusion, from Michael Oakeshott and um, Edmund Burke, if the ethics of socialism is coercion, you must, then the ethics of conservatism is we ought to. And it's those ethics of social democracy which means that I have confidence in this government 
and would urge you to vote against the motion this evening.